a lot of people ask us why we continue to work uh, with analog film and you know for me analog filmmaking is this beautiful congruence of you know the sciences and the arts my name is Steve Kosman and I'm founder and director of Mono no Ware. Uh, we're a cinema arts nonprofit organization based here in Brooklyn, New York. Starting five years ago, we launched a series of analog filmmaking workshops where we teach Super 8 filmmaking, 16 millimeter filmmaking, 2D animation, 3D puppet animation, film preservation, uh, film production, recording sound for film, hand processing. An image is captured onto film um, through the light-sensitive emulsion. It's a gelatin emulsion, and the emulsion contains uh, a silver halide. It's a silver salt, so it's a compound of silver and uh, halogen, in this case silver bromide. And when the light touches that crystal, it actually forms a small metallic speck. And what's happening there is photons from the light are allowing the electrons to change the silver ions and give it the opportunity to be developed into a metallic silver, creating an optically dense surface and uh, essentially a black area within the negative. If you'd like to switch the image back to a positive image for a projection, what you need to do is you need to bleach the film. And what the bleach does is it washes away the negative image and allows the latent positive image to then be developed through a second developer. So the anatomy of the film is that this photographic emulsion is coated onto a plastic backing and along the one side of the plastic backing is a series of perforations and these perforations act as registration for the film as it goes through first the camera and then later on through the projector and the camera and the projector operate in a similar fashion. In the camera, there's a shutter that's crescent-shaped or half-moon-shaped, and it spins, you know, uh, allowing the film to be exposed to light at 24 frames a second, and that is mirrored in the projection process, where there's a five-bladed fan that spins, allowing the light to pass through the image when there's a space between the blades, and then while the blade is covering the light, the film is advanced one frame at a time. The moving image element is actually a combination of two concepts. It's the phi phenomenon and the persistence of vision. The phi phenomenon is the optical illusion that creates movement from a series of static images the persistence of vision has to do with how the eye operates. When the eye reads light, that image is retained on the eye, on the retina, for 1 25th of one second. So as the film runs at 1 24th of one second, it doesn't give the eye a chance to see the time between the two images being projected, that black space. So it comes across as a constant stream of light and movement on the screen surface. When you're working with analog film, there's a, a certain physicality to the editing process. And the cutting happens with a splicer. Using the perforations again as registration pins, has a blade that will cut perpendicular with the perforation, which is where the frame line exists and allow you to marry the end of one sequence with the beginning of the next. If you were to think about it musically, you're kind of working in 4-4 four, four time. And so knowing that what your pace is and your rhythm is for the moving image and what is considered normal motion, you can make edits that are maybe short, like a staccato. Shorter things that kind of create a heightened sense of energy or awareness. Uh, maybe even like a strobing effect, uh, depending on how short you, you make your edits. Digital really allows you to shoot almost like an unlimited amount of media. I think, you know, having that limitation set is also a challenge within it, and it kind of causes the filmmaker or artist to make certain choices that maybe they wouldn't have to make otherwise. And there are a lot of opportunities for 
happy mistakes and accidents that might not exist otherwise in the digital realm. I think that's part of the reason we work with the, the analog medium is that um, there is a little bit of the unexpected that's part of that. And when you see a film projected and the light is passing through um, the surface of the, of the film and hitting the screen, yeah, there's, a, there's just a certain magic to that that I feel is maybe lost when projecting digitally. You know, the re refreshing rate versus the concepts of the five phenomenon and you know the persistence of vision. Well, I don't think that Mono no Wari can single-handedly turn the tide uh, for a you know, business-driven industry and material. I, I certainly think that a network of other spaces like ours and you know, all throughout the world, uh, Labor Berlin in Germany, Echo Park Film Center in San Francisco, Lyft in Toronto can kind of collectively keep that interest in the history and culture related to cinema arts alive.